guys go at them on the, uh, on the morning show? We don't go at them no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we haven't gone at them for 10 years, 8 years. We, we're not their competitor. Think about it. They are on Hot 97 in New York. We're on 122 radio stations. We're not competing with them. We're nowhere near them. What, what they do and what we do is totally different. The music that they play and the music that we play is totally different. We're totally two different angles. This is the problem with niggas. You a nigga that forget where you came from, nigga. I don't. You came from Hot 97, nigga. I did. They were the first station to let you come up there. Rest in peace to DJ Threat. Correct. They let you come up there, nigga. Yep. And you up here because you want some fancy-ass station with some fancy-ass studio with some fancy-ass shit talking bullshit. What that mean? It's wrong. What's wrong with it? Don't spit on the hand that lifts you up initially. <laughs> Keep that in mind. See, and that's your problem. I love that you said that. That's your problem. You know, you know what the problem is? You know, you, you know what the problem is? Oh, we see up. I'm saying, I can sit up. I can sit up. I can sit up. The problem is you're always protecting the white man. Who owns that station? Asians now. Okay. So why the f*** is somebody protecting the station and worried about that? Because at the end of the day, when his career's over and anybody's career's over, they do just like they did with Shayla. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a nice day. That's what all these f***ing stations did. And what that station did was create a rift in New York City where DJs couldn't work with each other. And that shit is whack. Because at the end of the day, I don't own Claire Channel. I don't own iHeart. He don't own Emmis. And none of them niggas own Emmis. But they created a rift over a station that they don't own. Shayla. Same station that owns Hot 97. Been doing uh, middays, sorry, afternoons for 27 years. They let her go. Why? She was number one at that time slot. She's radio legend. They let her go. Why? Because they don't give a fuck. When they want to get rid of her and change, they just change. You don't own that station. What's going on? It's your boy Big MVKJ, and I just wanted to pause it real quick. This is DJ MV, pretty much just talking about like his hip hop experience of being like a DJ in the industry with the radio stations. I just want want y'all to see like, look, like companies at the end of the day, especially major ones and everything, they'll let you go. Like, don't think for a second like, yo, they've been with you for this many years. You done this community service for that. Boom. If it's not beneficial for them. And they could get rid of you. They could get rid of you. Especially if you're just an employee. Employees, they get switched out all the time. They get swept up under the rug for the reason why and all that. Get covered up with stuff. They, these are things that are just happening. Y'all just got to be aware. Whether if you're a um, blogger or whether if you're a, a type of personality. Just make sure, like, you know, when you go into these things, understand you're disposable. So, like, what I like to tell, like... A brand, like say if you like a DJ on a major station, right? And you don't own that station at all. So like you could potentially get fired at any moment, especially the this day and age and social media, people getting canceled for anything. If you don't line with their values or you make their company look bad, it could just same day. So like look, I always say this, make sure you build some type of leverage for yourself. Like make sure, you know, you got money coming in. You got this. You got all my fans really messing with me heavy. Just anything that could, you know, make it less of a reason why people could just make any type of decision on your behalf. But ownership is key. And just because you get paid tons of profit from it don't mean you own it. And that means you can't make decisions on it. So, and that means, you know, you might be excluded from certain information that the company might know. So, like, just always keep that in mind. But I'm going to continue. I don't own a station I ride for the breakfast club and I want to win. But I'm not going to sit there and do something that, that I don't own. Yeah, I'll die for my wife and my family because that's me. I don't own I heart. If I do some foul shit, I'll say some foul shit right here on this podcast. Sorry, Mr. Casey, your time with us are gone. They don't give a fuck for the last 13 years we made the breakfast club number one in 122 markets. I don't own it. They don't care. They don't care. So you put your life on the line on the station for what? You know at a time in New York City, a, a Hot 97 DJ could not DJ with a Power 105 DJ? For what? For what? Just imagine, right? Let's talk business. Right? When it comes to the car shows, right? 
Outside of the international car show, I'm the biggest. Around the country. 20,000 people in my shows. 25,000 people. Right? Imagine, I'm just saying, imagine me and Flex got together and did a car show. Just imagine. Imagine me and Mr. Magic did a car show together. Me and Greg Street in Atlanta. Or shit, me, Greg Street, and Flex did a car show together. Nigga, we would kill. We'd make millions a year doing it. We, we'd be bigger than the international car show. We'd take it from city to city to city to city to city. We'd probably make 10 million a city. Split it. Three, three, three. Three, three for me, three for him, three for Greg Street. The other million we put back in the business. But no, we can't do that. The owner of iHeart, he can talk to the owner of Emerson. They can make another play on something else. But they make it like they feel like we can't. What the fuck is that? Why? I, I, I don't own a share of iHeart. I don't have 10% of that. Why? So yeah, you want to fight for a company that you don't own? What? It just doesn't make sense to me. Now you look at every rapper. Right? Every rapper. Little Baby could do an album with more dirt. They own two different labels. Not a problem. Well, it's all about money. They do what they want to do. But here is a DJ. We act like we can't. What sense does that make? I got a book coming out. And I, I, I got to be careful because I can't go to Emma stations because that's whack. If the content is good, the content is good. So I, I think, too, that's a point a lot of people are not going to understand, like, the conflict of interest with, you know, like, certain um, businesses. So, look, let's say you got radio station A and you got radio station B. If you work at A and let's say you got something going on on your own, Company at radio station A is not gonna want you to do business any shape, way, form in the public eye with radio station B because it's like, yo, what are you doing? Don't look good in the public. It's like uh, cross promotion. Um, we're sending our fans to them. It's a um, possibility we might lose that retention that we have with that audience because you did that. That's that's the company's incentive and. And, co and, like, the eyes of the company, of course, that's what they should do. That's how they benefit. That's how they, you know, keep things going at their company. But you also have to understand when you go against the company's thought process, you know, you're likely to be terminated same day. Like, don't be surprised. K. Slate, competing station. An album coming out. I played a record. Back then, you couldn't. Oh, you playing him competing? Who cares? He's a DJ. He's winning. I want to play his record. I'm going to play it. Nobody from my side had a problem. If any one of them DJs got a record, good or bad, I'm going to support. I want DJs to win. That's me. You see what I'm saying? Magic, he's on hot. He does a car show. His car show is a week after mine. If I'm not here, I'll send a car to his car show to support. I don't get no money off of that. He's on the other station. Who cares? I just like the fact that Magic is out there doing his thing. Why can't we do that? What's the problem with that? So why you can't apply that same thing to have a relationship with Build a Rapport Flex? Me and him just don't see eye to eye when it comes to those things. And I, and I don't think we ever will. When it comes to business, but you never asked him. Um, it's ego and pride. You know it's not, it's not ego and pride. That's just the game he plays. He doesn't DJ with with people that's not on the station. He doesn't do those type of things. I, I, don't, I don't care. You've never seen me on the fly and say, oh, I'm not working with him because he's from hot, uh, pal, uh, hot. Mm -hmm. Last night, two nights ago, I did DBRC's party in Jersey City. It's me and Walla. Mm -hmm. Walla's on that station. I didn't say, oh, I ain't doing it because Walla's there. Walla didn't say, yo, I ain't doing it. One of the best DJs out there ever, but I do a party and I ask him to DJ? It's Camillo. Camillo. He's on that station. I love Camillo. Mm -hmm. He calls me. I'm there for him. Camillo's a good dude. One of the best DJs I've ever seen work, especially when it comes to that open form, that open format. The best. He knows how to control the crowd. When I'm out of town and he's DJing, I go check him. And he's never, he never makes me feel like, oh shit, Envy here from the other side. No, Envy, my nick. How's everything? How's the family? How's your wife? How you kid? A word? I Envy. That's how we should be. That's how we should be. Do you feel like because of a lot of stuff that you went through in the past? Meaning younger, meaning high school, meaning different encounters. Do you feel like that that um, sort of lingered?
get on in who you are as an adult because you come off as a person solid you didn't know me from a can of paint and you you and I told them you know uh, gave me the mortgage guy I told him look out for me you know what I'm saying but you do come off as a person that when you in position you are going to let your position be known mm -hmm. and I've heard your rants not rants I heard you get at Fleck at the time before mm -hmm. So the things you said is like, come on, he was, I mean, come on, he was over there. He was, what are we doing here? It doesn't matter. When you go you at fall, me. But you fall into the same category. When, that's when hypocritical. You, like like I that. said, when you, when you swing on me, I'm shooting at you. Have you ever tried to reach out to him and have a private conversation? No, because you wouldn't. Now, I feel like in the space of competition and, you know, you have others that are respected in the game, you're respected in the game, and, you know, there's points where you don't start seeing eye to eye and let's say for whatever reason there's issues that involved publicly, you know. Like kinda letting people know your leverage and all this stuff like that, your assets, whatever the case may be. However you kinda show that you know you that top dog, whatever the case is. I don't think that's necessarily bad because when you have another person doing it, it can kind of influence things like it's that's that's all it is it's kind of put out some type of perspective perspective and that's at least how i see it but um i'm about to let this wrap up yeah let me know what y'all think in the comments like comment subscribe and you know let me know what y'all think and yeah bow see y'all later